British army dates back to 1645, coinciding with the expansion of the British Empire and the colonization of North America. Britain's professional military evolved through centuries of major conflicts, including the American Revolution, various campaigns against Napoleon, and the Crimean War. While war waged in Crimea in the 1850s, professional military forces organized in the Dominion of Canada. The militia patterned itself after the British Army, and Canadian units went on to serve with British field forces in South Africa and the First World War. When Britain declared war on Germany in September 1939, an independent Canada followed suit. In 1940, the militia was renamed the Canadian Army, reflecting the independent, professional, and modern nature of Canadian forces in the Second World War. The Canadian Army had a basic rank structure similar to other combatants, but there were enough unique characteristics to render the tables of equivalent ranks in many references inaccurate. This video will attempt to provide some clarity. The lowest category of soldiers was referred to as other ranks, a subtle reflection of Britain's caste system. The lowest rank was private, though other specific titles were used depending on the soldier's unit. In the artillery, he was called gunner, and the cavalry trooper. There were three types of infantry battalion in 1939, rifle battalions, which made up the majority of the army's combat power, tank battalions, and machine gun battalions. Many of the rifle and machine gun battalions patterned their traditions after specific regiments of the British Army, including unique rank titles such as Guardsman, Fusilier, or Rifleman. The tank battalions were absorbed into the Canadian Armoured Corps in 1940, and despite never having had cavalry traditions, adopted the rank title Trooper at that time, severing their connection to the infantry. Regardless of their title, private soldiers were the rank and file of the army, and made up the majority of soldiers in infantry sections, tank, and artillery crews. A private could be appointed Lance Corporal, or Lance Bombardier in the artillery, this was not a rank, but the soldier nonetheless wore a one-bar chevron on each sleeve and was given additional responsibilities. In the infantry, for example, he was the second in command of a ten-man rifle section. The rank of corporal, or bombardier in the artillery, was signified by a two-bar chevron. Compared to some other armies, a Canadian corporal was invested with a great deal of authority. In the infantry, for example, he commanded a ten-man rifle section. A corporal could be appointed lance sergeant, which permitted him to wear a three-bar chevron and enjoy the privileges of senior non-commissioned officers, though he continued to be paid as a corporal. He could be reduced to corporal at any time without administrative action, which wasn't the case with a substantive sergeant. Substantive or permanent sergeants wore a three-bar chevron. In the artillery, a gun badge further distinguished him from a lance sergeant. The Royal Canadian Engineers used a bursting bomb badge for this purpose. In the infantry, each 36-man rifle platoon had a sergeant as second-in-command. A staff sergeant wore a crown above the three-bar chevron, as well as an artillery gun or engineer bomb were appropriate. This rank was used to fill very specific appointments, such as company quartermaster sergeant, or equivalent in the other services. Staff sergeants were also used to administer orderly rooms, offices, and workshops. In 1939, the rank of Warrant Officer Class III was created. The insignia was a bare crown worn on the lower sleeves. The rank was trialed as a replacement for junior officers in the first year of the war, but the Army decided to want it infantry platoons, artillery, and tank troops commanded by officers. Most of the warrant officers Class III were commissioned as lieutenants beginning in 1940. A warrant officer Class II wore a crown within a wreath. The most common appointments a W02 filled were regimental quartermaster sergeant and company sergeant major or equivalent. The highest non-commissioned rank was Warrant Officer Class 1, who wore the royal arms on his lower sleeve. He enjoyed a number of dress distinctions normally denied to other ranks, such as officer quality cap and collar badges, a collar and tie, and in service dress the Sam Brown belt. A number of appointments were filled by soldiers ranked W01, including Regimental Sergeant Major, Ordnance Subconductor, and Sergeant Major Instructors of the Instructional Cadre. A Master Gunner Second Class added a gun below the royal arms insignia. A royal arm set in a wreath was worn by a conductor of the Royal Canadian Ordnance Corps or a Staff Sergeant Major First Class. It was also worn by an artilleryman holding the appointment of Master Gunner First Class, with the addition of a gun badge below. Special appointments in military bands and pipe and drum bands included Pipe Major, Drum Major, and Bugle Major. These appointments were designated by an inverted four-bar chevron and were usually held by sergeants. The Canadian Army did not have an elaborate rank structure for aspirant officers as compared, for example, to the German Army, and tended to rely more on commissioned officers at lower levels than their German counterparts. An officer in training was called an officer cadet, and he wore a single rank star with a white stripe across the epaulette. On commissioning, the cadet became a second lieutenant, designated by a single rank star, which was a miniature of the insignia of the Order of the Bath. Two rank stars designated a lieutenant. 
In an infantry unit, an infantry platoon of 36 men was commanded by a lieutenant. A captain wore three rank stars. In 1939, some companies, batteries, and squadrons were commanded by captains, and captains could also be found in various appointments such as adjutant, intelligence officer, carrier or scout platoon commander, etc. A major wore a small crown on his epaulette and increasingly commanded company-sized subunits as the war went on, though a major might also serve as second in command of an infantry battalion, armored regiment, or artillery regiment. A lieutenant colonel wore a rank star surmounted by the crown and usually led a battalion or regiment-sized unit of 600 to 1,000 men. In September 1940, new rank stars and crowns were adopted to better distinguish officers from other ranks. The badges featured colored backings representing the different branches. It was the first of many regulations that gradually introduced a full range of color insignia to the battle dress uniform by 1943. Red backings were worn by officers of the Royal Canadian Artillery and Canadian Provo Corps. Purple was worn by officers of the Canadian Chaplain Service. Yellow back badges were worn by officers of the Cavalry, Canadian Armored Corps, Royal Canadian Army Service Corps, Royal Canadian Army Pay Corps, and the Corps of Military Staff Clerks. Dull cherry was worn by the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps. Blue designated the Royal Canadian Engineers, Royal Canadian Signals, and Canadian Postal Corps. Scarlet badges were worn by infantry, with exceptions made for regimental customs, as well as the Canadian Officers Training Corps, the General List, and the Veterans Guard of Canada. Green was worn by the Canadian Forestry Corps, and Emerald Green by the Canadian Dental Corps. Rifle Green badge backings with black rank was permitted for officers of rifle regiments, with exceptions made for regimental customs such as the Queen's Own Rifles, who wore red and black badges. The Royal Canadian Ordnance Corps wore dark blue until April 1943 when it changed to red, and the Royal Canadian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers adopted dark blue on formation of the Corps in February 1944. The rank of Colonel was not associated with any command roles and was bestowed to senior officers serving in a staff, administrative, or honorary position. In the First World War, officers holding the rank of Brigadier General wore the crossed sabre and baton insignia of general officers. The rank was replaced by Colonel Commandant shortly after the war, which was used until 1928 when the rank of Brigadier was established. Unlike in the First World War, the Brigadier was not considered a general, and thus he no longer wore the sabre and baton. A Brigadier, as the name implies, commanded a brigade, which was usually a grouping of three infantry battalions or three armored regiments. Divisions, groupings of two or more brigades, were commanded by major generals who wore a crossed sabre and baton and single rank star. A lieutenant general wore the crossed sabre and baton with a rank crown above. A corps headquarters was commanded by a lieutenant general, with two or more divisions under command. First Canadian Army was commanded by a lieutenant general until 1944, when Harry Creerar was promoted to general. A soldier holding the rank of general wore a crossed sabre and baton insignia with both a rank star and rank crown on his epaulette. While units rested and reformed their ranks, commanders and staff officers were hard at work planning the next phase. Canadian Army officers had two main types of duties, command appointments and staff appointments. The general staff system adopted in 1905 by Britain and Canada had three main branches. General staff, or G branch, was responsible for operations and training. The Adjutant General Staff, or A Branch, was responsible for personnel. The Quartermaster General Staff, or Q Branch, was responsible for administration and logistics. Unlike German Army General Staff officers who were identified by special insignia and remained on staff for their entire career, officers in the British system alternated between staff and command positions. Special insignia worn by all staff officers in the First World War were not worn in the Second World War by officers below the rank of Colonel. While general staff officers were not employed directly in combat units, their officers nonetheless had a mix of command and administrative responsibilities, and the commanding officer was supported by his second-in-command and unit adjutant who helped coordinate planning, training, personnel matters, logistics, and administration. Combat units were grouped into formations called brigades. Under the brigadier's command were a number of general staff officers. There were three grades of general staff officer. GSO-3 was a captain, GSO-2 was a major, GSO-1 was a lieutenant colonel. The senior staff officer at brigade headquarters was the brigade major. He coordinated all work of the HQ and had a number of GSO-3 of the G branch below him tasked to coordinate operations, intelligence, and liaison. Another major, known as the deputy assistant adjutant and quartermaster general, 
coordinated the work of the A and Q branches. The A branch had a staff captain and a number of GSO3 to handle personnel matters, such as administration, honors and awards, postings, promotions, medical, dental and auxiliary services such as sports and recreation. The Q branch staff captain handled logistics, including supply, transport, clothing, equipment, maintenance and ammunition. He had a junior staff officer to assist, and three other GSO-3 represented the Service Corps, Ordnance Corps, and Electrical and Mechanical Engineers as advisors. There was no GSO-1 at the Brigade level, but at each higher level, Division, Corps, and Army, the staff system broadened in scope to accommodate additional complexities, from public relations to air support, and included higher-ranking general staff officers. The Canadian Army's already unique rank structure was made more so by virtue of the fact that the Army was officially bilingual, the plans for an entirely francophone formation fell through due to a shortage of staff trained officers fluent in French. The development of the various ranks, their titles, and their associated responsibilities developed over centuries, and this video can only give the briefest of overviews. For those interested in learning more about the Canadian Army, a list of recommended reading and references is included in the video description.